Dr. David Perlmutter recently published a book called Acid Drop, and in it, he discusses the idea of lowering uric acid to hopefully lower the chances of developing dementia, among other health benefits. So in this video, we'll explain what uric acid is, have a deep dive into the data, and if we should be going out of our way to lower our uric acid to improve our health. Let's get into it. Uric acid is found in blood, and it's created when the body breaks down chemicals called purines. Foods and drinks that are high in purines, they can raise our uric acid levels. So it's foods such as red meat, organ meats such as liver, drinks with high fructose, and alcohol, especially beer, and including non-alcoholic beer. Most uric acid, it dissolves in the blood and it's passed out through the kidney, so it doesn't cause any problems. But when uric acid reaches a certain threshold, that's when crystals start to form in the blood. Those crystals can settle in joints and cause gout, which is a form of arthritis. So when I see a patient in the clinic and I'm concerned they may have gout, I will check their uric acid levels because I want to see should we be doing anything to lower the uric acid levels and stop these crystals from forming in their joints. But outside of managing gout, in clinical medicine, uric acid isn't really measured. There was a thought that high uric acid levels might lead to things like kidney damage, heart disease, and high blood pressure. But if we have a look at the latest clinical guidelines, high uric acid levels, although clearly associated with high blood pressure, chronic kidney disease, and cardiovascular disease, it has not been established as a causal factor in any of these disorders. So essentially what it's saying is that yes, there's the correlation with high levels of uric acid, but it doesn't look like the high levels of uric acid actually cause the those problems. But it's even more interesting than that. Uric acid, it may actually protect against dementia. Over the course of several decades, the results from largely observational studies and a few experimental studies, they do support the concept that high levels of uric acid may, through an antioxidant effect, reduce the risk of degenerative neurologic disorders such as Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's disease. So that is completely the opposite from what Dr. Pearl Mudder is saying in his book. Overall though, that is the current medical thinking when it comes to uric acid, that yes, we absolutely want to know about it in the context of gout, but outside of gout, we don't really measure it. So let's look at Dr. Perlmutter's different approach and see if it stacks up. So he often talks about a 12-year observational trial that was published in the British Medical Journal. It involved just under 1,600 people with the average age of 72 years old. These people's brains were measured with an MRI machine, and what they found is that the risk of dementia, it was increased with people that had higher levels of uric acid. This association persisted after adjustment for traditional cardiovascular risk factors. This is a really interesting finding. It's suggesting that higher levels of uric acid may increase the chance of developing dementia, which is the complete opposite from traditional medical thinking. This study tries to explain those differences by saying that in this trial they used old adults and they also followed them up for a longer period of time. Okay, so we've got conflicting data. What happens then if we combine those different trials together to see what they show? And this is called a meta-analysis. In 2021, a systematic review was done to look at uric acid levels and the risk of developing dementia. It involved 23 eligible studies involving 5,000 500 participants, and overall it concluded that lower levels of uric acid is a potential risk factor for developing Alzheimer's disease. And the mechanism for this effect, it needs to be confirmed through further investigation. I just want to repeat those findings. This analysis, when it combined all of the available data, it looks like lower levels of uric acid is associated with increased chance of developing dementia. So not lowering the dementia risk, it might actually be increasing the dementia risk. One potential mechanism for this is that uric acid, it is a powerful antioxidant, and it accounts for around 60% of the scavenging capacity of the free radicals in the human body. So uric acid might actually lower the oxidative stress in the brain. That's just one analysis though. When there's conflicting data, we need to look at multiple different analyses to see if they overall give the same result. Again in 2021, a separate review was done looking at dementia and high uric acid levels. This one was published in the British Medical Journal. Overall, it found that high levels of uric acid did not increase the risk of dementia, but it may actually decrease the risk 
of developing Alzheimer's disease. It finishes by saying that more investigations are needed to demonstrate the potential relationship between high levels of uric acid and dementia. So right now we've got two different reviews that are disagreeing with the idea that lowering uric acid may be protective against dementia. It actually looks to be the opposite. Let's now have a look at the latest clinical trial. The latest one I could find was published in March of this year, 2022. It involved just under 8,000 people, and again it found that people with lower levels of uric acid were associated with poorer brain performance during the four years of follow-up. On this channel, we focus on the data and not the personalities behind that data. Based on what we've gone through, it looks like slightly higher levels of uric acid may actually be protective against dementia. There's nothing new here to convince me that I should be measuring the uric acid levels of my patients that don't have gout. What I will say though is that I generally agree with the lifestyle advice that Dr. Perlmutter gives. For example, regular exercise is always crucial. He also advocates to lower the consumption of high purine sources such as high levels of red meat or high levels of fizzy drink that are filled with fructose. I definitely agree with this, we should be sticking with water and only having mild to moderate levels of red meat in the diet. We do want to be lowering alcohol consumption, particularly beer, and this does include non-alcoholic beer. Diet, exercise and sleep always come first, I'm just not convinced that using uric acid measurements to justify diet and exercise is particularly useful, because again we end up in the same place, diet, exercise and sleep. From the data here, I also don't see any value in using supplements to lower uric acid levels. So for example, quercetin may lower uric acid levels, but that's not why I personally use quercetin. I use it five days every month to help with the senolytic effect. This is where I'm trying to clear away old cells that are no longer dividing. And I certainly don't see any justification for measuring the uric acid levels in my otherwise healthy, non-gout patients. So please let me know in the comment section, what did you think about this video and what are you going to do about your uric acid? Are you just going to be practicing a good diet, regular exercise and high quality sleep? Or are you going to go out of your way to measure your uric acid levels? I would love to hear from you. A massive thank you to all of the patrons who support the channel. And if you haven't already, please check out my clinical trial fundraiser for rapamycin. Until next time, thanks very much.